worked for Johnson & Johnson and I did some consultancy work for a number of the medical device companies here in Galway. So, have a fair amount of insight into the sector. <clears throat> so I guess maybe just to explain about the, the training and the free element which is what a lot of people are interested in. Um, it's a highly regulated sector. Just to show hands, is there anyone here in the sector already? Or is everybody here trying to get into the sector? A few people in the sector. So it's a highly regulated um, sector because it's a patient at the end of the process. Um, and so companies are very particular about their processes, about taking people in for that reason. And while you're in the sector, it is an academic and a qualification driven industry that likes its people to upskill. So for that reason, they have free courses under the Springboard program. And Springboard was set up back when the crash happened in 2007, 2008, um, to try and upskill people that had lost their jobs in financial services, construction, aircraft, um, because you had thousands and thousands of people losing their jobs all at the same time. And then looking for uh, alternative sector and industry to go into. Um, so that's why the Springboard programs were set up to help people upskill. Since then, we're almost back at full employment. The Springboard initiative has continued, so it still allows people to upskill for free, but has now been opened up to people that are working while they're in the companies. And the thinking behind that is, from a government perspective, is that people can upskill if you're an operator or technician level, you might want to go into engineering, you might want to go into labs. So the, the thinking behind it is that people can upskill while they're working and then free up the entry level positions again for more people to come into the sector. Because there is a lot of growth in the sector and projected future growth, which I'll go into in a little while. But just to explain that springboard element, springboard is the free, the government uh, subsidized element. So that's how you can avail of that Programs are worth probably about 6,000 if you had to pay for them. So it's, it's not insignificant. Uh, in a farm education, we're the training provider. So we are starting a level six program here in Galway in January to train people to go into the sector or people that are in the sector that might be looking to be made permanent. The programs are accredited by TUD Dublin, which is the same as your, LI, or your LIT in Limerick, the institutes or your GMIT here. So they were IT Tala and now they are TUD. And then Griffith College accredits some of our programs also. Not going to go into too much detail on these next few slides, but the theme from these slides is that the health, the sector is extremely healthy and buoyant. Um, all of the four sectors that we're involved with, pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical, medical device and food are all healthy and growing sectors um, with lots of opportunity to, for growth and in terms of uh, new positions becoming available. Um, so MedTech is very relevant to us here in Galway, because Galway is a medical device hub. Um, and you can see uh, now a lot, a lot of these uh, companies I've mentioned here are more Limerick based because uh, I work out of Limerick. But it, there's more medical device companies in Galway than there is in Limerick. So you have you know, some of the biggest in Medtronic, Cook, or sorry, Medtronic, Boston Scientific, Craigana, Merit Medical, they're all very big ones. And then there's literally hundreds of smaller ones as well, all in the medical device sector. So a medical device is anything really you can see in a hospital room. When we think of medical device, sometimes we think only of the, what we call invasive medical devices that go in like catheters or stents. In actual fact, things like hospital beds, um, insulin pumps, um, any of those injectable products, they're all actually medical devices as well and they're all been made and manufactured here in Galway. So in terms of our own experience in this area, we're, the, we're a private college that have got the Springboard funding available but we only specialise in this sector so everybody that works for us has worked for years and years in the sector, so we know it very well. We've been hiring managers in the sector. Um, we've been uh, recruiting into the sector for years, uh, gone through various uh, growth and uh, ups and downs within the sector, so we know the needs of the sector, and at the moment the sector is on a huge growth trajectory. In terms of ourselves, we've 
trained over 5,000 people at this stage to work in the sector and we always had a result of an average of 75% of people achieving work post the programme because we put a lot of time and effort into not just giving you the academic element but also helping you out with things like a fit for purpose CV followed by a good solid interview because you can have all A's is my experience um, in HR. You can have all A's in every subject, but if your CV isn't fit for purpose, you don't get the interview. And if you, don't, if you don't get the interview, you have no chance of getting the job. So you need to have a good fit for purpose CV, followed by a good solid interview that can communicate the message that's on the CV. And we would spend up to 20% of the entire course time on that. That's how important we see that. And it's the biggest thing that was stopping people entering the sector when there was high unemployment rates. There was plenty of people, there was plenty of qualifications. So why couldn't they get jobs? Okay, there was less jobs, but it was often that their CV was too long, wasn't ticking the boxes in terms of what the employer. Anyone hazard to guess how long it takes for a hiring manager to make a decision of whether they're going to interview or not? If they have a pile of CVs on their desk, how long do you think they spend looking at one? Any idea? Yeah, it's a very small number of seconds. The interview decision is made on the first page of the CV. So if you have loads and loads of relevant information over on page two and three, you've probably missed the boat. The decision was made on the first page. If it's going into a portal, an automated system, if you haven't got the keywords in your CV, it's not even getting in front of a human to say yes or no. But that's how important. I always describe the CV element as it's like having you have a qualification right up to a PhD. Some people would have masters, degrees, certs. It's like having a brand new car sitting outside your front door. That's what your qualification is. But without the CV being fit for purpose, it's like having no steering wheel. You can't drive it. So <clears throat> there's a big element of that involved in trying to tr make a change into a sector or a change within a sector. So just to explain a little bit, um, and in my experience, I'm uh, seven years doing this now, the biggest confusion for people taking up courses is they don't understand the credit values of the programs they're doing. So there's people that think they have full certs or full diplomas, and when they go to move on and they're progressive here, they discover, no, you actually have 20 credits of 120 program. And they thought they were ready to move on to a degree. So just to explain a little bit, about that because that's important whether it's with us or with any other institution that you're going with understand the question you need to be asking is how many credits is that so there's a national framework and this is uh, called an um, nfq so it's national framework of qualifications and this is international and travels so if a level five is a leaving cert just so you understand a level five is a leaving cert so the next one up then is if you can imagine coming out with your cao now at the moment and you're going into let's say gmit the first two years you do is either a, a higher search or an advanced search. That's 120 credits. When you go on and do your year three, your ordinary degree, that's another 60 credits. So it's 60 credits per year. And then when you do your higher, your fourth year of your degree, that's another 60 credits. Where people are getting caught is they're availing of springboard programs. That's called a certificate in something or a diploma in something. But it's actually only 20 credits. So it's a module within a search. So the biggest um, cul-de-sac that I find people in is they want to move on to an ordinary degree and they have what they think is a, is a higher or an advanced search, which is 120 credits, to discover they haven't. They only have 20 or 30 often. So it's quite difficult to navigate your way out of that. So make sure that you ask those questions if you are signing up for programs with anybody. The programs that we're starting here in, in Galway in January, um, very quickly, I'm just going to tell you the topics that's included. And I have brochures. Um, these are all, for, programs are under Springboard, so are free. But you have um, the preparation for work. That's the whole area I spoke about, the CV and the interview skills. And also networking. So I spent the morning before everybody got here, um, because I'm working with people that have just completed exams on level six, level seven and level eight. So when, before you guys got here, I was networking downstairs with all the recruiters and the companies, <coughs> finding out what they have. 
to bring all that information back to our course participants to say, hey, do you know they're hiring? So that's the kind of extra work that we do that you don't get um, with most colleges. Um, so the subjects then are introduced, introduction to pharmaceutical science, principles of medical device operations, manufacturing process technologies, process improvement, which is um, a feature in every business because every business wants to make things leaner and better and faster without compromising on quality. Quality assurance and good manufacturing practice and utility facilities, which is everything that's services at plant, so your heating, ventilation, air conditioning, water, um, and a quality control. So there's obviously a big quality and science element because this is a product that's going to be involved with a sick patient. So just so you understand, that's a 60 credit program. So that's a half, full half of a, a, it's a 60 credit program, so it's half of a full level six. So typically then if you have two of them, you have a, so it's not, you're not getting snookered with this 20 or 30, that's a 60 credit solid program and in half the time, that would normally take you a year, that takes two semesters. So just uh, to just let you know the way that that's run then is, it's two evenings a week, so it's either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday online. So 6.30 to 9.30 from your home, in your PJs, if you like. Um, it is on playback, so if you're working shift, you can play that back the next day. The only one tip I'd say is play it back before you do your next lecture because lecture two might not make sense without having listened in on lecture one. And then an average of two Saturdays a month. So we will be running this from Galway. The last one that I've been running it is from is run from Limerick. Now we have a number of people traveling from Galway to Limerick and we have a number of people traveling from all over the country because it's only the Saturdays you will have been interviewed and you'll be in the sector or else you're in the sector and you're progressing your career to, to move on. Most people want to move on to level 7 and on to level 8. There are two labs involved, in, one in each semester um, and there the exam, we don't know exactly where the exams fall but the exam period there between the 11th and the 23rd of May, you'll have your three exams in there somewhere and we usually tell people that so they don't go colliers. So if it is that you're interested, I'm downstairs at the Inner Education Stand. I have some brochures here if you want to take them. But if you were interested in availing of that free training, you have to do a Springboard application because Springboard, if you remember my earlier slide, is the funding mechanism from, from the government. So this, uh, you need to avail of the funding. Um, you'll get a call from me or one of my colleagues to talk through the program because we, we try to take people that really are interested um, in the sector or want to get into the sector. Um, and then there's only three pieces of documentation we need, a copy of your CV, photo ID, which is a driving license or a passport, and just if you're employed, it will be usually a P60, it's what people send in, or a letter from your employer to say you're employed, or if you're unemployed, just a picture of your own employment slip. And that's the application process.